Hello, welcome to this week's episode of Heart Corner. Before we get started, I'd just like to say that I will be leaving in some of my speech mistakes. I feel as if my speech patterns make me sound less robotic and might make this easier to understand. But aside from that, today we will be discussing the origin, fun facts, and general care of the Mexican mole lizard, or the five-toed worm lizard, by bees, or the ajolote. Bite bees were first discovered by Edward Drinker Cope in 1894. They were, of course, native to Mexico. Although they are most prevalent in Baja California, Guerrero, and Chiapas. The thing about Mexican mole lizards, though, is you can't really find them anywhere. Very rarely are they found above ground. Now for some fun facts. Number one, Mexican mole lizards are a part of the family known as bipedidae lizards, or worm lizards. Other members of this group would be the four-toed worm lizard, the red worm lizard, the, checker bur- the checkerboard worm lizard, and of course the Mexican mole lizard. Number two, very little is known about the Mexican mole lizard. They are so obscure, in fact, that not a single breeder of them exists. This isn't because they're endangered or anything. They aren't even close. One day, I hope somebody breeds them. They seem like excellent beginner pets. Number three, because so little is known, I'm afraid I'm gonna have to, I'll have to cut it short with the fun facts. So, my apologies. Here's something interesting though. The female only lays eggs underground. That is all. Now to the general care. As previously stated, nobody really talks about the bipes biporos, especially not about the care of one. This means that what I'm telling you is just me interpreting what would be best for them based on their location. Since they're native to more humid areas within Mexico, I'd think a lot a lot of humidity is good. Of course, since the mole lizard is a burrowing species, I'd go for a loose substrate. Exoterra's plantation soil bricks would be my favorite, but there are many other brands of products that'd be good as well. Just as long as it's loose and packs humidity, it'd probably be be a good bet. Not only is humidity important, but so is heat. Similarly to giant day geckos, a basking spot of at least 90 degrees should be provided. Although they are not arboreal, climbing areas should be provided for enrichment. Their diet is primarily insectivorous, so dust their insects with a vitamin supplement. Anyways, thank you for tuning into this episode. All my sources are in the description, and I'll see you next time.